welcome to my messy office. Um, this is going to be a review of uh, my favorite era of Eric Larson artwork, um, his Spider-Man run. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go over the Omnibus here by uh, David Michelini and Eric. And it's got a bunch of other stuff in it, too. So let's take a peek at that. All right, so um, as you can see, this is a massive omnibus. Um, I would say it's equal to the size of the uh, the toddy, the Amazing Spider-Man omnibus. Uh, tons of issues in here. Um, one of the selling points for me, though, was that they also include the Marvel Comic Presents run. There was three or four, I think three issues, that Eric illustrated the first half or the you know short stories and in, in the beginnings, and uh, those books were very special to me growing up just because they were uh, very different, a grittier style, and uh, just a different way of drawing Spidey, um, kind of on the coattails of Todd, obviously, uh, but different, different enough where it wasn't a clone, it was something new, and uh, obviously paved the way to Savage Dragon, right? Um, which also I'm not knocking it at all. Savage Dragon was awesome. Super bloody book, cussed, all that stuff. That was fun. So, yeah, so let's get to this. Um, the binding on this book is excellent for being a huge issue or a huge book. Um, I don't, I think it would take a few hundred times going through this sucker for it to have any issues with uh, pages coming out or whatnot. Um, this particular omnibus is a first print. I, I'm pretty sure it's out of print. Um, it's got a retail of $100 even, but I do know that on uh, auction sites, I've seen it as high as $300. Um, I would never pay that for it, but they might just go back to print with it eventually. Um, I know there was an issue as well with the, the X-Men Inferno Omnibus that came out a while back. Um, that book there is asking for triple of, the, of what it should. And I do know, I have seen solicitations for 2021 um, that they're reprinting it. Sometimes you just get a, you know, a cover that might be kind of whack, but whatever. You're getting the content, so. All right, so, da, 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 let's skim over this. I don't care about that. I'm all about the art. All right, so this here was during uh, the McFarlane run. Uh, Eric did a fill-in issue. This was not his first book on Spidey, though. He did one probably a couple years before this. And um, not very impressive. He went completely Marvel house style with that issue. Um, and that one, I think, I'm pretty sure it's in the back of this issue, in the back of this collection as well. So, yeah, so he's got a fill in issue here, 324, uh, awesome McFarlane cover, um, but still inspiring art. This was fun. And I remember when this came out. Um, I think because it wasn't Todd's interiors, um, a lot of fanboys like myself were a little bit upset. You could kind of see that he was trying to draw from uh, McFarlane's style a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, uh, a good choice at the time. Uh, this is a very Eric panel, though. This is It's odd that this one's so early in the game because um, a lot of these other things are very Todd-like uh, with the the crop shots and all that and the big eyes and all that. So um, even the detail on the glasses is very much uh, a watered down Todd. But this stuff, this this is very Eric right here. Um, and then of course he's got the, the exaggerated poses, you know, that McFarlane would do and all that. So sorry about the glare too, this book is huge. So yeah, let's just skim through this. So there's this issue here, <laughs> very Toddy pose. Um, and there's a lot, you know, the nice thing about the, these books too, these fill-ins, there's this one and another one after this. Um, the nice thing about these is that I don't feel like he's regurgitating what we've already gotten in the past, uh, you know, two, two years or so from McFarlane. Um, so yeah, when, when these were fresh, um, you know, on the spinner rack, they were still exciting. There was enough, the McFarlane cover sold you. But the interiors were still good enough where it's like, yeah, we're going to complain, but um, the artwork's good enough, right? Like, it, you know, that total Todd mouth. I mean, that's very out of 
out of the element of what um, Eric, you know, typically would do. Um, this is another issue. This is a few months later. So I'm thinking that Eric did this fill in. I think Todd did two or three books after, I think two books after it. And then this issue came out where Eric got his own cover as well um, with Magneto. And um, this was a cool issue. Um, Titan Acts of Vengeance. I don't remember being a fan of this uh, crossover event. Um, yeah, anything that was like a non-X-Men centric event, I could care less for. Uh, give me Fall of Mutants, give me um, even Inferno, you know, give me that stuff. Yeah, so you can see he's kind of developing his style here. Um, still has a bit of the the McFarlane, you know, throw webbing on everything, right? So this was cool. Um, this was exciting. I love seeing these crazy characters uh, like the Blob, and uh, there's a few in the Marvel Comics Presents uh, books as well that he illustrates that have this aesthetic of the uh, bigger than life you know, character, but they're just drawn really cool. Um, those characters always look awesome to me. Yeah, so he's doing a little bit of the, uh, you know, the dynamics with, um, again, it, it comes back to Todd, the, the longer panels. This is very much a McFarlane aesthetic uh, for all the previous issues that came before it. So um, he's trying to fit the groove. Um, you know, again, I don't know any of the backstory to this. Like, it might be editorial asking him to, or it might just be him knowing that that stuff works and sells at the time. And he was still fairly new. He wasn't really a, a name at this point um, until about a year later. I think on a Sinister Six storyline or something like that. So, yeah, he was still he was still fresh. Um, he does have some wonkiness, like... Like, uh, this, Todd would have smoothed this out, but instead he kind of gave it the groove where the, you know, the eye socket would go, uh, for realistically, but, you know, sometimes you gotta break those rules. Um, this is a very cool shot here. Yeah, so, again, there, um, the allure of this is, the printing of this book is super nice. Um... I do have a ton of this still in the newsprint editions, the single issues in that. Um, I never was a completist, though, with Eric, so I don't have all of this stuff. <laughs> very McFarland, very McFarland face right there. Um, but it is cool to see, you know, um, Eric doing his best to uh, emulate it a bit. Um, I never owned this issue, but um, it still has some win in it. Um, he did decide to go smooth on the outline of Spidey's face there, which makes me happy. Um, a lot of texturing stuff that you weren't seeing other artists do. He's doing a lot of stipple, a lot of stippling and stuff. I'm not sure if that is a zip -a tone or if that is actually him with a pen. It could be either or. Um, this isn't actually that painstaking to do. It's This here would probably be, you know, 20 minutes of work at that. Uh, for anyone that, you know, knows how to stipple, I guess. Um, and he does. It doesn't look like he does a lot of fades in it, so it might actually be a zipatone. Yeah, so this stuff's kind of interesting. A buddy of mine had this issue, and I remember him telling me. I had asked him about it, and he was like, "Eh, I yeah, get the cosmic Spidey in that." Yeah. All right. So very cool right here. This pulled me back into Spidey. This issue right here pulled me back. I just thought this was an awesome design. Um, and funny enough, this is very similar to the Marvel Comic Presents, um, cover that grabbed me on that when he was on that, on that, uh, anthology book. So yeah, he's, obviously he's got the dark stuff going on. He did a good rendition of Punisher for what it was when it was, um, he didn't go overboard with it. He did a lot of these very cool... Um, he was playing a lot more with silhouettes. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether or not he was um, influenced by the uh, uh, the John Byrne Amazing Spider-Man work, or if this was possibly just him looking at a lot of Frank Miller, which it might be because these these heavy drop shadows and stuff is a little out of character for a lot of his his work because everything prior to this was very open, um, and even here, all the silhouettes with the teeth and stuff. So might have just been the time of day. Um, with other artists having been doing it as well. 
a lot of stipple effect here for the shading. Um, not sure whether or not that zip a tone. Yeah, so this stuff was cool. Uh, let's see, and then it gets to a little bit more. Yeah, he really put, he was starting to put a stamp on, on uh, how to illustrate Mary Jane. Um, you know, Todd had his own look for her, but he definitely had a more grittier approach with her. And um, I was buying it. His venom was cool. He was adding a lot more teeth than what Todd did. He was doing crazier stuff with the mouth. Um, I think he kind of broke the mold with Venom with his with his version. Um, yeah, this is funny enough. We, we buddies of mine and I, we had a joke that possibly because these books came out a few years before uh, you know Rob on on New Moon, so we always kind of joked that maybe this was you remove the webbing and you got Deadpool right here essentially because of the eyes. He was doing a lot of the really squinty eye thing um, when Spider Man was intent, like stuff like this, like. Yeah, you remove you remove the webbing on this. Give him two guns. That's Deadpool. Um, <laughs> again, it doesn't end. It doesn't end. He just keeps doing it. Keeps doing it. So, yeah, curious if whether or not Eric's work on uh, Amazing had influenced the creation of that character. This is um, the hands here are a little bit fringe of McFarlane, and I can't I can't put my finger on it exactly where it was from but I feel like I've seen that um, and there is quite a bit of stuff in here that feels fringe um, this seems familiar um, and it might just be a regurgitated you know something a lot of the different artists were doing at the time um, Eric really mastered I really like his inner face shots where spider-man um, you know uh, breaking the fourth wall he's breaking the border um, that makes this page rock. Now, if he, if he cut this off and he was, um, confined to the border and stuff, I feel like this page wouldn't have any power at all, but he does it here as well. And then with the rocks and stuff. So yeah, that stuff was fun. Uh, but again, this stuff, you know, these are, these are things that are cool to look at. Um, just because, you know, the memories of, of reading this stuff for the first time. Um, and again, very nice printing on these. Um, this is a whack pose. This is bizarre. This has never made sense to me. This didn't make sense to us as young teenagers back in the day. This made no sense to us. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is bizarre, especially for like a such a crazy character. But maybe he's just trying to sell the aesthetic of you know the impossible poses within uh, the Spider-Man books and all that. So yeah, Mary Jane's looking awesome. Um, yeah, that was the only part, that was the only thing about McFarlane that I never bought into was I really wasn't a huge fan of his Mary Jane. Um, this is a very much a Todd design, the large face and then the small panels within. Um, and again, he kind of plays it here a little bit. So, yeah, and, you know, at the time when this stuff was coming out, um, everyone was comparing. If you were drawn Spider-Man, they were like, well, how does it, how does it, uh, how does it face off against a McFarland Spidey? Because that was sort of the, you know, the bar, right, at the time. So all of us kids, we were drawn. We were, we were all copying Todd. All right, yeah, here we go. Marvel Comics Presents. So this was the selling point of this omnibus for me, right? Um, besides the fact that the colorists missed their mark, the eyeballs are actually underneath. He colored white, whoever or she, whoever the colorist is of this, they colored the white area of the eye which technically should have been a highlight on the brow. And um, so it, it makes it look like Eric doesn't actually know anatomy or where eyeballs land on a skull. Um, but yeah, so underneath, you can actually see the where the, the intended eyeballs are. And I think perhaps the colorist saw these, um, maybe they thought because the area is larger above the eyebrow, that maybe that was the intended. And he also threw these other eyebrow wrinkles in here. so. Yeah, I don't know. But if this was corrected, it would, you know, yeah, I can't look at this and not, I can't unsee that um, because I, I know they missed the mark. The, the two eyeballs are definitely right there. They're very easy to see, uh, but maybe not so much if you were the colorist, right? So yeah, um, these always featured a cool wraparound cover. But yeah, like this was sick, like uh, Spidey 300 fringe, absolutely right here. Um, his Wolverine was cool. I really like the way he, it was the facial expressions and stuff. 
the poses. Um, and this work was just dynamic. There you go. It's Deadpool again. Um, yeah, this is kind of whack, but um, I mean, there's enough in this in this you know book to to save it, right? Um, this was a cool shot. Um, there's a few things within this run that um, like this right here. Um, at some point, I might actually homage this myself. I've always loved this design, and this here reminds me in some weird way. It reminds me of that Punisher cover. Um, yeah. So, and this doesn't look like I, this. This looks like it might possibly be like a very high quality touched up scan of an original cover. Um, there is a little bit of dithering and low res going on here with the line work. So, yeah. But the interior stuff is spot on perfect. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so you get Wolverine. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have to thumb through this thing a little quicker. Otherwise, it's gonna be a four-hour video. Um, but like again, I mean, look at this. This is crazy. Like the amount of content in here. This is insane. Um, oh, here we go. This goes back to the whole thing I was saying. Like these these crazy large, you know, larger than life characters. Um, he's always drawn them well. Um, he had a few in Savage Dragon. He was drawn like that too, and they they looked sick. They looked sick, and it makes you want to design characters that are just you know uh towering right um yeah this is kind of a weird shot this is a cool shot right here um yeah i feel like there's a lot of stuff in here that could have easily been borrowed from um other artists including the image founders um just because it's very um, unique i feel like for the time it was coming out i don't recall what year these were coming out i was definitely in high school so maybe 90 maybe 90 i'm not sure this was always a cool cover um i've always felt like they they cheated all of us by knocking all the line art to blue in here um i would have really been interested to see all of this in full color i'm pretty sure this became a poster um without the logo i'm pretty sure i saw a poster at some point at, at a shop but i don't recall whether or not it was full color or if they just left it you know the line art knocked out blue so, um, and again, like this stuff here, um, it kind of had a, like a uncanny X-Men Sylvester aesthetic. And that might've been why I've been attracted to it. Cause now that I'm looking at it, this is a very marked kind of layout. So, and obviously, um, anyone from back in the day knows this right here totally looks like a character that, um, you know, maybe, um, Eric was, um, trying to to kind of homage his own because before marvel he was already doing savage dragon comics um so yeah he was just his own way of inserting his own character in this book in a sneaky kind of way um yeah this is a cool spread right here double page spread powerful any 13 year old that looks at this wants to draw the minute you see this you want to draw stuff um yeah even these close-up panels are awesome <laughs> another dragon evil dragon yeah so this stuff here um i don't recall this issue right here i might own it it might have been around the time when i started buying comics and not reading them there was a time when i started buying comics um and would intend to read them it was just I didn't want to miss out on the release, and then I would end up not reading them. Yeah, this stuff doesn't remind me. It, yeah, Deadpool face. <laughs> it's the eyes. Oh, this right here. That's like, it's insanity. I think you know this might have been one of the panels here that my buddy was like, "Dude, come on, man, look at this. Like, get rid of the webs. Who is it?" All right. So yeah, cool. The, uh, very McFarlane esque. Even the anatomy. It's very wonky. That that forearm looks crazy. Um, still works he should have thinned out the, the uh, wrist but whatever yeah and then this leads into the sinister six books um he had he had an inker yeah terry austin inks on this issue here um yeah you know it's okay um yeah some of that stippling effects this definitely looks more like a zip because it's like more like lines like wiggle lines um or it could be someone who's just very controlled going over it um almost like a typewriter it could have been that as well when you've been inking stuff for long enough you you learn ways to do stuff that looks uh, mechanical so 
All right, so, and um, I'm going to point this out too. One of the things Eric started doing that I didn't see a lot of other artists doing was he was doing these uh, these deleter areas where you had um, entire areas being hit by hard light. So even if the colorist um, wasn't using that to their advantage, it was still indicated that there's this bright light um, reflecting off of characters. And you didn't, see a lot, you didn't see a lot of artists doing that at the time. They would play with rim lighting, but never stuff like this where it's... Um, creating an, an entire flat edge. And that was cool to me as someone who was, at the time these were coming out, I was trying to learn how to draw, really. Um, and then you get to see Dark Side of Spidey, and this stuff's cool. These, this is a cool panel here. I've drawn several panels that resemble this. Yeah, and then he's one of the best artists for, for uh, Dr. Octopus and that. Um, yeah, and then other stuff doesn't sell me. You know, why check inking them here this this i don't know not really a fan um not familiar with this inker here uh, it, it looks a little overworked and he kind of missed the, he kind of missed the mark on the eyeball so i'm gonna i'm gonna get over this this is an awesome shot i really like this a lot um i'm gonna steal it i really like that i'm gonna steal that so i'm just letting you know um where are we at uh, cool shot this one I think this was a sticker at some point another cool shot so here he is um, here's Eric uh, selling the sizzle he's like okay big shots big panels um, not a lot you know a little bit of dead pull to sell you the book um, yeah and again back to Todd's trope but he was overdoing it so I think he was looking at Todd where Todd was doing three or two panels in a face and he's like well I'll double you up so he's got one two three four or five. Technically, this is six panels of story here. Yeah, so um, back to Sinister Six. Interesting piece, Walt Simonson had inked this. Um, that might be actually why I really love this cover, because the concept of it is, is dated, even when this came out, um, of the larger characters with the smaller character uh, being the focal point. But um, yeah, the line art to this, that might have been why. I'm, I'm really big into Simonson, so... I might have picked up on that at the time when it was released. Yeah, so again, you're getting back to Eric here. I'm going to skim through all this because this is not my favorite era here. Even though the story is probably going to get used by uh, Disney Marvel. Spider-Man, they're going to need to do something to revitalize it this right here is a little has always been a little fringe to me there's a cover by todd of spidey getting choked out by the lizard and i've always felt this was a uh, heavily influenced by todd's cover um and i'm okay with it it's i mean it's a cool layout it just kind of feels sometimes like um back then they were very open about sales of books and stuff and when you knew that a book was selling you know six figures um a lot of times you would feel a little bit cheated when they when work would get regurgitated it's like oh give us something new give us something new i really dig this all right so i'm gonna let me get over this here um after this run here um he ended up as McFarlane's replacement on the self-titled Spider-Man books. Um, a lot of this just kind of missing the mark for me. I'm not really feeling it. Um, there's still quality in between the lines. There's, there's panels here and there like, that's a cool shot. That's a cool reaction shot. Uh, that's a cool reaction shot. And the storytelling's solid. Everything is like, um, everything's legible in these books. There's not a whole lot that Eric has ever done that, um, you know, this is kind of an odd one. This feels almost like a Wolverine splash to me. Um, but it, I mean, it, he's probably drawn everything at this point, you know, he, he probably feels that he was draw, had already drawn everything at this point of shots and stuff. Um, oh, the popular issue. I think this right here was the first appearance of, uh, who was it? Carnage, right? Cletus. I think he, I think it's his first appearance uh, within this book. Not as Carnage, but as the character. So I think this is like a key issue to collectors. Something like that, yeah. Let's see if I'm a liar here. Pretty sure. Oh, yeah, there he is. He, yeah, future... Uh, one page. <laughs> yeah, future... Um, 
Carnager. All right. Might have been a second appearance. I think it's first. Um, yeah, this book didn't do anything for me. I remember this issue. This issue was cool. I've always liked that cover. Um, he goes off. The art goes off with his illustrations of of uh, Venom within this book. The teeth are insane. It's like every other every other page. He was drawing the mouth bigger and bigger and had you know double the teeth like insanity. Um, do, do, do. Let's get through this. That's not the book right there, is it? No. Okay, and then he had the 350. This this was a very cool book. Um, I anticipated that it would not suck, but just be kind of lackluster because they were already reporting that he was going to be doing some replacement work for Todd um, on the, uh, I believe, on the Spider-Man book, if, if I remember right. I used to read all those Marvel Age books and that too because, um, you know, geek, fanboy, call it what you will. Um, okay, so you got some portfolio stuff here in the middle. I'm not sure why they, this might be the split of it. So yeah, you got a, a pin up here, another pin up here, uh, Joe's in it. So um, Joe was an anchor for, you know, Jack Kirby. He probably talked his way into this one here. Uh, John Romita Sr. ain't this. Is this Al Williamson? Yeah, Al Williamson inked this piece here. Um, Al Williamson did a bunch of really cool, um, like those Star Wars movie adaptations, like those were those were always great. Those are some of my favorite books. Um, he's got Sal Buscema here, um, and then of course he did a half and half page here. This is a half drawn. I think this is McFarlane art, and then this one here is Eric. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they signed it on their respective sides. So there you go. Um, right here, boom. Here it is. Uh, Todd, uh, Todd leaves Spider Man. Um, it's Crate and Spawn. Eric takes over. So this is pre-image. It's right before, right? So Eric takes over. He, he's on the book for a bit, but you can see, man, like, like, again, you know, he goes from this. How we do this? Yeah, he goes from this. Like, here's his MJ, right? He goes from this to this. This insanity. Like, this is like, this was awesome. This was wicked. He really leveled up, um, and he was also. So he was, he was writing this book and he was also inking himself. And I think that, you know, his, his inks were, his inks were so good, like over himself. And so this is all, this is all a precursor to Savage Dragon, like all of this awesome shot here. Um, the crazy monsters, you know, um, so yeah, and, and even his writing style and the things he was doing, um, a lot of people complained about Beast being super goofy in this book. It didn't bother me at all. Um, you know, I think some people just, they expect people to all handle the character the same. This looks like something straight out of Dark Knight to me for some reason. Um, I think it's just the aesthetic of the uh, the design aspect. And it's chunky, you know, and a lot of Miller stuff would do that as well. Like a lot of these lines here. Um, you know, there there's no, uh, the fades, you know, he's, there's not a lot of fades here. Like these are chunky lines. Um, but they work. They work. They're awesome. Super gritty. This was a really gritty book. A lot more of that Zipatone looking stuff he was using in here. Um, the webbing here, uh, you know, kudos to the colorist. I wouldn't even know where to start there. I'm sure that that page in black and white is confusing as hell. Uh, Badass Shot of Spidey. This right here is sick. I've always liked this panel for the sole purpose of, the, he's got this area here, and he's got that gradient of that, zip, that zipatone gradient. I always thought that was that was awesome. I don't remember seeing him do that in a gradient before. It's always been just the the standard flat, you know, kind of look. Um, yeah, all these books were gold as soon as he got this. So um, definitely, I think he knew he had to level up. He had to to change his his uh, approach and the game plan for all this. Um, there's not a weak page in the bunch. I mean, even this Sandman to me has never been an interesting character, but he finds a way to draw him interesting. So, yeah, this is a cool swap here. He does a page flip in the panels, and uh, it reads it reads fine. I know there's a lack of background, but he doesn't use that as a that's not one of his tropes. Um, this was always a cool face. I trace this face back in the day. This here looks almost like. Um, <laughs> this looks like, you know, if uh, Eric and Todd had a baby, right? Like, that's what it would be right there. Um, 
Yeah, cool panel. Very awkward pose. But it, it just works. It was drawn, it was drawn the right way. He picked all the right lines. Um, this was a cool panel. A cool splash, I should say. Um, this page, um, trying a little too hard with the hand, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't really, you know, there's nothing about this that I can really actually complain about. Um, his Hulk looked a little too human to me, but it's just his style. Um, I feel like a lot of the stuff within these last couple books that he worked on for Sp for the Spider-Man uh, self-titled book, I feel like he regurgitated because I feel like I'm pretty certain that he used a lot of these layouts within the Savage Dragon of the fight scenes. Um, like I can totally see, see uh, Kill Razor or whoever getting knocked out by Dragon in this exact pose. So, yeah, Spider-Man with guns. A uh, buddy of mine thought this was ridiculous, and I was like, nope, I'm sold. I actually like this. This is very different. He's with, uh, you know, uh, Solo, Agent Solo, whatever. Yes, this stuff was fun. Um, and he made characters like, no, I've, I've never cared about Nova. He, he made me kind of like the character a bit. Deathlock's in there. Um, but yeah, like he, you know, he really puts his mark, you know, his Mary Jane... Made her look interesting. Right here, I think this might actually be my favorite issue that he had drawn. Yeah, this issue here. He goes off. Eric goes off. Uh, this this could have literally been an issue of Savage Dragon, I feel like. I think Marvel kind of took the chains away and said, hey, do what you want. And uh, he did. Um, the hatching in here is wild. Uh, the layouts are wild. Crazy shading. <laughs> Uh, you know, now Spidey is a cable all of a sudden. I think he broke his arm. I think he had a broken arm, and they gave him this arm so that he could still do stuff while he's healing. Um, you know, and then who draws a better Rick Moranis than uh, than Eric Larson, right? This was always a cool page. I would love to own the original to this one here. Yeah, so anyways, uh, there's that. Let's see, we've got one more issue. I think he did one more book after this. This video has gone way too long. Um, this here, sick. This whole page, sick. Um, yeah, Mysterio, my favorite, uh, Spidey villain ever. So, when he's drawn well, for me, it's, it's, uh, fan service. All right, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, this stuff, I mean, this stuff sells. This stuff sells. Any 13-year-old kid like myself was buying this, you know, and then you'd see this insanity. Like, if it didn't get crazy enough, now you got this, you know, in the, you know, uh, Gogs entered the entered the chat. Um, this was a quad fold, uh, quad, uh, quad open, uh, or no, no, sorry, it was a trifold. It was one. The spine was here, and then this piece and this piece. This piece was folded in, so you'd unfold it and you get a, a three piece uh, spread. Um, and this is actually one of the first times I've seen this because I never, I never opened mine up. Again, back to the time when I was just buying books because I planned on reading them and then didn't want to pay an uh, increased price later on. This stuff is cool. It was very cool. Um, almost like a Howard Chaikin kind of approach to the, the inking on this, on her uh, leather. I'm assuming it's leather. Shiny leather. It was the 90s. It was shiny leather. We can decide that as fact. Um, all right. So, yeah, I've got all this stuff here. So as you can see, it's got the Spidey stuff, and this is I've I've just gone through a ton of a ton of books. Like this is a this is more than some people's career just right here, um, and this isn't even all of it. But anyways, yeah, dozens of dozens of Spider-Man books. Um, yeah, this is the final page. So this is the final page when he was on the book, um, and then it jumps to a bunch of stuff I really don't care about. Um, these were books in the two thousands. I'm assuming I don't own any of these. Um, I do now in this collection, but I don't own the floppies. And so story and art by uh, Mackie Larson and Beatty. This might actually be Eric trying a different style. Um, nothing about this um, gets me pumped to draw. I, I'm not I'm not sure what's going on with this, 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 this book. Uh, there's a few other books after it. Um, luckily for, I mean, for myself, I don't, I don't really feel cheated that it's in this book. It could have done without, to be honest. Um, 
you know, the, the inks to it are, the inks to it are good and stuff. It just doesn't feel like, like an Eric book, even the cover, um, questionable, questionable, but yeah, the work, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was a, a finisher situation, you know, um, it kind of toes the line between a, uh, a poor man Larson meets, uh, someone who really likes Jack Kirby, I guess. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, yeah, okay, so, so, yeah, a very, very small amount of the stuff that I personally do not care. Uh, apologies if you do like it. Um, this was Eric's first Spidey book, so this one is the one I was talking about, uh, 287. So this is pre, uh, it's even pre-McFarlane. Um, yeah, so, and as you can see, this is what I was talking about. This is, this is house style. This is, um, I just got a gig and I need to keep it. So I'm going to do what they want. Right. Um, yeah. So none of this stuff to me, I mean, when this book came out, I, like, I don't remember ever even buying it. It was, it was, uh, I might've got it from a quarter bin to be honest. I know I owned it at one point. I might still own it. All right. Uh, and then he's got a little bit of a cover gallery here, uh, different inkers. Um, he was always a very good match with Terry Austin when he was drawing this style. Um, I do know that he did some other stuff with Austin later that to me just wasn't, it wasn't my thing. Uh, Bagley, I think this is Eric's ink. So I, I'm pretty sure this is Larson's inks, but uh, uh, Mark drew this. Um, this is Eric and uh, Terry Austin. Doesn't feel like a, uh, an Eric piece to me besides that corner box art. That's totally Larson, but um, this just feels... It feels flat. Um, okay, so this piece here was inked by Eric. Uh, this piece was inked by Tim Townsend, which is funny because this is probably the best inks that Eric has ever had on a single piece of artwork. Uh, Townsend is insane. Um, Dan Panosian inked this piece here. Um, yeah, and this is very fashion forward. I, I love all this stuff. And I can see where Panosian had come in and <clears throat> uh, not fixed, but stylized areas, which were probably just scribbled in. So, but this is actually a very, this is a very impressive piece. Um, this is ladder. This is like when Eric was drawn like this. So, um, yeah, kudos to Dan. Good job. Um, this is Eric on himself and I don't know, there's no autograph on this. Um, obviously if anything, Eric did the layout, I have no idea about the inks and that, um, they look pretty clean. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I've never thought of Eric as a, a clean, a clean inker. Um, some Marvel handbook stuff by Eric, um, right here, boom, Eric in the prime, uh, in his prime, this is all a uh, card trading card art from the Marvel, the Marvel universe, um, cards and, yeah, it's strange because it says series three down here, but this is, it literally is, this is the 91 series and this is the 92 series. But regardless, these, these cards are awesome. Rhino looks sick. Um, it's got some other stuff here in the back. Uh, some reading material, uh, some original scans of different things. Uh, some stronger than others, obviously. Some sketches. Um, it looks like uh, corner box art, perhaps for all three. Um, and then Eric did a uh, he did a portrait of himself. It looks like him, so I'm gonna assume it's Eric. Um, here's some more panels uh, that Eric had drawn. These are this is all like this, again this is all Eric in his prime, in my opinion. Uh, some recolored pieces and then yeah more recolored work. So anyways, uh, this video went way longer than it should have. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my review. I do have this book out, uh, quite often, but I do, I do find myself going more towards the Marvel comic presents era stuff. And then the latter being, uh, his run on Spider-Man self-titled. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you can find this, um, if you can find this for the, the cover, you know, the hundred bucks, I mean, I highly recommend getting it. Um, Yeah, I mean that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, I would not. I mean, I personally would not drop two hundred, three hundred on this book. Um, I would just actually maybe inquire if you knew somebody um, 
about reissues or reprints of this book. Um, but it's definitely worth it's definitely worth the price tag. Um, I mean, I'll let you know right now. Like like the hundred bucks. I mean, this amount of the book right here, if you were to buy floppies, would run you over the hundred dollars. Okay, so um, this is easily you know three to four hundred dollars worth of Spider-Man comics uh, that you'd be buying on newsprint um, that are printed on you know nice probably eighty pound gloss. I'm assuming uh, eighty pound text. So. Yeah, no, it's a good book, and uh, yeah, that's all I got to say.